She says she's just checking in. She says she wants to hear from me. She says she's checking in over and over and over again. It's getting suspicious. They warn me not to fall for it. I tell them she's better off hustling helicopter rides down at Whitehall. Sway Sway says, no way, uh-uh, not even the ex-cons want her around hawking her harebrained beliefs to society's most unwanted and alienated. But the regional management says she's too extreme for their extremities and kick her ass to the curb because she gets under the skin, boils the spinal fluid, and that's before she even begins. She's looking for an excuse to avoid discussing what she doesn't want to discuss, but what we need to discuss because it's getting worse and goddammit, it's time to discuss. How she's always disguising and excusing and covering up her backward way of thinking, wondering if I'll go down in history for giving into the forbidden, a life built of creation and the pursuit of knowledge and refusing to bow down to a fantasy that's done nothing more than fuck up this reality. She says, I think that you will agree that we are individuals who can have a relationship while still disagreeing with one another, don't you? Ugh, someone who can't even take the time to construct an efficient sentence or apologize for her inequities, hoping one day I'll forget all about this. Yeah, you know, I don't really care about sentence structure, honestly, but all this emotional freight I'm hauling around NYC is taking a toll. <laughs> And all I really want to do is pull off the Jersey Turnpike at exit 13A, hijack a Roro from the Port of Elizabeth, and dump it off into the Atlantic Ocean. <sighs> Move on with my life. Maybe head west, that's the tidal wave where my emo dump takes out Staten Island for good and all. She says, I have to wonder if this is more than a political stance. It's simply irrational. Well, here's a translation of the past two years. Can you keep it out of sight so we can keep it out of mind and be friends again? She says she doesn't want politics to get in the way, but politics have real-world implications every single day. Two days after this sociopath gets elected, two of my best friends beaten, one half to death because he's gay, and the other because he's suspect. It's just politics. Let's sweep it under the rug. I guess assault don't matter when it's not someone you love. Now she thinks this relationship is on life support, but I'm here studying fiction, so I recognize immediately that she's living a fiction, because there's no relationship to save, and she's following story structure like some lame mass market purchase out of South Station. And it's like that across the board. Friends and family are jumping overboard, her ship is sinking, and she's still asking for an update on how school's going. Honestly, the only thing I truly learned from academia was how to keep the upper hand in an intellectual conversation. But she's not intellectual, so her game is already rigged. Thus, I'm making this public, not to embarrass her, but to keep the upper hand, because if I respond privately, she wins, and then it becomes someone I can't withstand. <sighs> a fucking sucker. So it makes sense why she had to buy the love of her youngest son, because her other two kids won't talk to her, so she locked Ethan down by making the car payments for him, hooking him up with child support, and now she dangles ownership of the house at the end of a string and says, behave as I like and it's yours. I'm talking about a woman who jumped on board that shit train of bullshit blaming Marilyn Manson for the Columbine shooting and denial that elementary school education glorifies violence by how it tackles American history and forget hip hop, what I consider to be the most important literary movement in the past 30, 40 years. It's just too scary. So she sits down with her Juice Newton and Little House on the Prairie, hating the world for pushing towards clarity. And as I write these things more or less as a form of therapy, she starts in on me with that. Uh, don't you know you sound like a brat? You're a descendant of Emily Dickinson. Can't you write like that? The only thing that carried over from that line to me is the fact that I'm a loner and sort of sad, but other than that, I'm a dude in the 21st century, so no, not really, but I'll give it a try. If the I means being dead, then how come so many people like you are so fucking blind but still breathing? Let's sweep under the rug the fact that ever since I started doing raids in my neighborhood, my neighbors have disappeared, vanished without a trace. And these Mexicans were the only neighbors I ever had that didn't steal my mail, bitch about my cats, and had some semblance of grace, something no neighbor who looked like me ever had, ever. Businesses mysteriously closed to change of faces at the laundromat. Brutality becomes the normality, with no one to check the cops who are working a little too hard for their salary. She doesn't get that. If your words don't fit the zeitgeist, you won't get heard. If you fall victim to the zeitgeist, you lose everything. A fully funded grad program that wanted me put all their offers on hold out of concern for their financial integrity. Says to reapply after Trump's out of office. It's just politics. Let's sweep under the rug the fact that we live in a world where clients are cheapskates, employers cut back hours after a wage hike, CEOs can't relate, and municipal leadership is half-baked. All this on top of her making me what I've become a 30-something person in a prick state. You know, honestly, I don't know what I've become, but I can't become what she's become, because if I did, I wouldn't deserve to fucking live. So I'd let my conscience guide me, ghosting her, trying my best to be honest and live my life with integrity, or at least what integrity means to me and demand it of others. And part of that is to say what I need to say, because people like her find comfort in the silence of others. 
So it's important for people like you and me to use this ammo and spray their comforters with the stench of truth. Hey, it ain't a broken pen, it's just what we do. And in due time, finally become what I set out to become, Robin, better than you. After two years of not talking to you, this is my reply. I know it isn't direct, it's not personal, and it's never going to be, not ever again. That's why I live stream this shit. I'm almost to the end. Address it to her and click send.